Now that we know a lot of integration tricks, I want to take a look at one last idea concerning areas. It's going to be improper integrals. So now, let's think about what we've already done. I have definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. We're going to call this the area. Area meaning it can be signed if we're under the x-axis. Our area picks up a minus sign. Area under f of x between a and b. So here's our picture. So the idea is, well, what if I want to go from 0 to infinity? So we'll take as an example e to the minus x dx. So let's take a look. I start at 0, and I go all the way off to infinity. Now you might guess, if I'm taking an area where there's an infinite base, that surely must produce an infinite area. But we'll see that it won't. But first we've got to get an idea of how to nail this notion down mathematically. So, let's take a look. All right, one thing I could do is, I can go out from zero to numbers that progressively go out further and further and further to the right, and then we could take a limit. So that's gonna be our idea of how we get out to infinity. So let's take a look numerically at what happens here. So I might e to the minus x, which looks like this. I would do my definite integral from zero to natural log of 10, e to the minus x, so any derivative of this is going to be minus e to the minus x, and then I stick my two numbers in. So if I put a 0 in here, I'm going to get e to the 0, which is 1. We're going to minus minus that, so that becomes a plus 1. Then putting e to the natural log of 10 in there is going to give me minus e to the minus natural log of 10. You can put the minus sign in there, which gives me a natural log of 1 tenth up top. Putting that over e, e and natural log collapse, leaving me with a minus 1 tenth. Now, natural log of 10 is roughly 2.3, so this is going to be this area right here. How about if I push out to natural log of 100? Same idea, except now I'm going to do 1 minus 1 over 100. It's going to get me this region. So natural log of 100 is roughly 4.6. And you notice 1 tenth is bigger than 1 one hundredth, so we've just gotten a lot closer to 1 by a factor of 10, in fact. If I do 1,000, natural log of 1,000, same idea, 1 minus 1 over 1,000. Now, natural log of 1,000 is roughly 7, so we're pushing out a little bit more. And we notice this thing, this area here, as I keep pushing out, it wants to get closer and closer to 1. Let's formalize this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this as a definition. I'm going to call, this will be called an improper integral. So it'll be the definite integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x dx. We're going to define this as the limit as b goes to plus infinity from 0 to b, e to the minus x dx. So note what's happening here. We're going to take these areas over finite regions, like I'm doing here, and we're just going to keep pushing out a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. And we're going to see if this goes to a number or not as a limit. In this case, let's take a look. We do our antiderivative, e to the minus x. We're going to stick in 0 and b and take the difference. That's going to give me limit of 1 minus e to the minus b. And then we just need to know where e to the minus b goes. I take a look at the graph. This is minus e to the minus x. How do I get that graph? I graph three points, minus 1, 0, and 1. So. If I put a 1 in, I'm going to get e to the minus 1 here. So that's going to be minus 1 third, which is right there. If I put 0 in, I get 1. And then if I put minus 1 in, I get e to the 1. And that's going to give me minus 2.7 roughly, which would be down here. Connect the dots, and we still have the same horizontal asymptote as e to the x. Just flip it down. Now, let's take a look. As my x coordinate goes out to infinity, this is going to get closer and closer to 0. So what's going to happen here, this goes to 0, and then the limit is going to go to 1. So this is what I would call the area under this curve. The area under this curve is 1, even though the base of my region is infinite. A little bit of terminology. If that limit exists, we say the integral converges. If the limit doesn't exist, we say the integral diverges. Let's take a look at a diversion integral. It's going to take improper integral 
from 1 to infinity of dx over x. Our graph looks like this. I take the graph of 1 over x, chop it off at 1, and then take everything under the curve off to the right. By definition, this is going to be limit b going out to infinity, definite integral from 1 to b of dx over x. Any derivative 1 over x is going to be natural log of x. Then I'm going to evaluate at b in 1 and take the difference. So natural log of 1 is 0, so all we're going to have is a natural log of b. When I take this limit, I look at the graph of natural log of x, or natural log of b. As x goes out to infinity, the y value is going to go off to infinity also. So we notice here we're not getting a number, so we're just going to say this improper integral diverges, meaning in this case it's giving us an infinite area. Okay, let's look at another one. This will also give us a little workout with Lehopital's rule. So I'm going to take improper integral from 1 to infinity, natural log of x over x squared dx. So our graph is looking a little bit like this, just to get an idea. And let's see what's happening here. So to get the indefinite integral for natural log of x over x squared, I'm going to want to do an integration by parts. So we'll do that first without the limit. So here, I really would like to get rid of natural log of x. So I'm going to call that u. So that way, when I start pushing through the integration by parts, natural log of x will go away and turn into x to the minus 1. So I'm going to let dv take care of everything else. So du of natural log of x gives me du of 1 over x dx. dv is x to the minus 2 dx. So if I take the antiderivative of x to the minus 2, add 1, flip it over, gives me minus x to the minus 1. I go down the diagonal, subtract what I get when I integrate up the right column. So that's going to give me minus natural log of x over x plus, well, actually a minus of minus of x to the minus 1 times x to the minus 1, which is x to the minus 2. Then to do this one, we just add 1, flip it over. So I get minus natural log of x over x minus x to the minus 1. Okay, let's go to our improper integral now. We're going to take this. We're going from 1 to infinity. So we're going to rewrite this as the limit of this as it goes from 1 to b. I'm going to skip that step and go straight to the evaluation part. So we're going to limit as b goes to infinity. This function evaluated b in 1. Take their difference. So that's going to give me minus natural log of b over b minus 1 over b minus what I get when I put 1 in here. On this term, I'm going to get natural log of 1 over 1. Natural log of 1 is 0, so that's just going to go away. And then if I put a 1 in here, we're just getting a minus 1. Let's see what happens. This here, when I push the minus sign through, gives me a 1. Here, let's take a look. On the second term, limit as b goes to infinity of 1 over b is going to go to 0. So this term falls out. So all I have to worry about is the natural log of b over b. Well, if I take the limit of the top and bottom, that's going to give me an infinity over an infinity. This is in indeterminate form, so Lehopital's rule applies. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom and see where that goes. That's going to give me a 1 over x. Derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Then derivative of x is just 1. And then we note when I apply our limit going to infinity, this is going to go to a 0 over a 1 or 0. So that limit definitely exists and is equal to 0. At the end of the day, my improper integral is going to be equal to 1. And so that's going to be the area under this curve. We can also consider improper integrals over the whole real line, meaning we can go from minus infinity to infinity. So as an example, I'm going to do improper integral over 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's going to look like this area here. So let's take a look. So how would you proceed? First off, I need to tell you how to go to your minus infinity direction. But that's just going to be the same as plus infinity. You just take the limit as you're going to minus infinity in the bottom part. So we'll get to that in a second. But how do you handle both at once? Well, that's not so bad either. I just pick my favorite point 
on the real line, and I'm just going to break this integral into two pieces. One going from minus infinity to say zero, then another going from zero to infinity. Now this simplifies things because here, where we have to figure out how do you do both at once, this just lets us do an improper integral here, an improper integral here, and then if things make sense, we go back and put the pieces together. Let's take a look. So, how would I do my limit going to minus infinity? Well, like I said, it's going to be the same as we would do for the plus infinity. We just change it up in the bottom. So this is how this first piece is going to look if we write things out. So it's going to be integral from a to 0 of dx over 1 plus x squared. Then we take the limit as a goes to minus infinity. Second part, we've already done a few of those, so that's as it's defined. And now we just compute. Now, go to your list of antiderivatives, and you'll find that 1 over 1 plus x squared is going to go to inverse tangent of x. So what we're going to need to do is to figure out how do we compute things with tan inverse of x. And the answer to that is just going to be to draw the graph a tangent. But we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to bust this into two pieces now. On this one, we're going to have the limit as a goes to minus infinity. So tan inverse of 0 is going to be 0. And then I'm going to have what I get when I put my a in there, and we'll take a limit. For this one, same idea. I put b in there, and then tan inverse of 0 is also 0 again. And then we have our limit. So let's take a look, closer look at these limits. Now, if you want to know how I get tan inverse of 0 is 0, remember, if I want to figure out how to get my inverse function, I just switch the x and the y. So tan of 0 equal to 0, you flip the x and the y. There's nothing to flip because 0 flips to 0. Also says tan inverse of 0 is 0. Let's see what I'm going to do with the tan inverse of b. I'm going to give tan inverse of b a name. I'm going to call it theta. And then the language trick says tan of theta is equal to beta. But we know beta is going to go off to plus infinity. So here beta is taking the place of y. So that's going to go all the way up here. And I want to know what angle theta, which is taking the place of x, is going to give me tan of that angle going off to infinity. So we take a look on the graph here. When b is going up to theta, we have this vertical asymptote at pi halves. So that's going to say that the angle is pi halves. Okay, the way you think of this is tan of pi halves is plus infinity. Okay, it really just says there's an asymptote at pi halves. So that's my first limit computed. For my second one, the same idea. We're going to take a look at tan inverse of a equal to theta. Language trick says switch the order. So we have tan theta equals to a. But a is going to go to minus infinity. Now we think of a as being our y value. Theta is our x value on this graph. So as my y value goes to minus infinity, going all the way down, the x value that gets me there is going to be minus pi halves. Or if I put a point in for minus pi halves, if I put minus pi halves into tangent, we think of that as producing a minus infinity. There's a vertical asymptote there, and the graph goes down to it. So we'll have our minus, minus pi halves, and then when I combine things, I get a pi. Okay, 